in the Android application. A uh, lot of features have been introduced of late, mostly around using maps of, as an analysis uh, uh, template for the cases which are registered in the different programs. And then uh, there is also support for offline analytics available in the app, which could be used to carry out local analytics within the application by the end user. And uh, uh, also you can study the data for individual uh, tracked entity instances as well. So we'll quickly review the objectives of the session today and then move into the demonstration. So I'll share my screen and move ahead with the presentation. Okay. So uh, the session, as, as I mentioned, is on Android analysis. Uh, the learning objectives are, we'll see how we can uh, <clears throat> demonstrate the maps uh, which are displayed in the tracker programs and the use of following, uh, following elements in the DHIS to Android application. One is the carousel, uh, second is the navigation to location, third is the map layers, and fourth is the user current location. Then we'll have a look at the tracked entity instance analytics, how it works in the Android application, which includes the uh, evolution of data element. You can uh, study the trends of different values of data elements, depending upon if they can be studied as a trend for repeated visits of a patient or repeated service delivery events of a patient. So we'll have a look at that. Then we'll have a look at program indicators how the program indicators can be used to generate a summary for the patient with the key or vital parameters that are important for the clinical care for the specific person. So we'll see how we can generate these summaries using program indicators. Then we'll have a look at the <clears throat> configuration of analytics using the Android settings web app. So we'll have a look at that. Uh, we'll have a look at how you can use the Android app uh, to display the various visualizations and the charting groups you create and how you can apply these filters to visualizations. So, um, so we'll go ahead with the demonstrations now. So, uh, you had already installed the application yesterday. Uh, so we'll be using the same programs and it's the same, uh, app as we had installed yesterday. Uh, you'll have to follow the learner's guide with the different uh, exercises which are given here. So we'll follow the same pattern. We'll do a round of demonstration for a certain set of features, and then we'll move ahead and we'll have a exercise for the participants to do through the learner's guide. So the entire session is dedicated to Android analysis. So we will take a short break in between for 10, 15 minutes, uh, and then first continue the sessions uh, from there. So I'll now switch over to my Android application and we'll start uh, with the first set of demonstrations.
Okay. So uh, we have a similar interface as we discussed yesterday. So currently I'm logged in into the Android application. Uh, so if you had logged out yesterday, we'll request you to log in again using the same credentials. Uh, and we, in case you're already logged in, then we can just start with the demonstrations uh, for different features that you want to see. So the first thing that we'll discuss is uh, the maps section in the uh, Android application for different programs. So we'll be choosing the COVID-19 contact registration follow-up program. So I'll just open the program. And once the patient list, list loads, you have two options given below at the bottom of the screen. One is for the patient list. The second is the map cycle. So if you click on the second icon, it will open up the, the maps uh, section of the application. So one thing which you need to keep in account is for accessing maps and the patient data through these maps application, to the maps component of the Android application, we need to collect the, the coordinates of the tag identity instance. Now, these could be the, uh, the enrollment coordinates, so the coordinates you select at the time of enrollment, and then they also could be the coordinates for program stages. So depending upon uh, at what intervals or at what events or at different stages you're collecting these uh, coordinates, you can select the information accordingly. So right now we're using the, uh, the coordinates of the person which were collected during the registration process, okay? <clears throat> So now you see different icons available here. So each icon represents one single uh, tracked entity instance or one single person. Uh, you can scroll through these persons by clicking on the, the information card, which is shown below. So these are scrollable. You can scroll horizontally uh, between the patients. So as you scroll from <clears throat> left to right, you'll see the individual patient information and the location of that specific person at which the person was registered in terms of the coordinates provided. If you want more information for this specific person, you can click on the arrow and you'll see more information on the attributes. Now, this is controlled when you're configuring your program. You are... Uh, marking certain attributes as a display in list. So the attributes which are marked in display in list in your program, those attributes will be shown here. So this is the information which was collected for this person during the registration process. So if you're also collecting the image of the tag identity instance, then you will see the image in place of this uh, icon. Since this demo database doesn't have the patient images, hence you see a, a patient icon available here. But if your program has collected the images of the patient as well, then this icon will get replaced by the picture of the person. Now, suppose this was the person you want to get more information about. So you can click on the card and the system will take you to the program and the, the program in which the person is enrolled and what information has been filled for that person for both events, for follow-up as well as the, the symptoms event. Okay. If you want to go back to the maps uh, section, then you can click on the back button. It will again take you to the maps application, uh, the maps component, which is inbuilt within the Android application. Now you can put some filters also to review uh, or to filter down the data which you see on the application. So for example, if you see on the top menu next to the sync button, sync icon, you have the filters section available here. So if you click on the filters icon, you'll see a list of filters which have come down. So for example, you only want to see the enrollments which have been done in the last month. So you can select last month. So and click again on the filters. So it will narrow down to the patients who have been registered last month. So earlier you were seeing a lot of patients, now you only see two patients or two contacts which were registered. So you can <clears throat> put a filter for uh, the enrollment date and uh, or event date or whatever filters are given here, those are applicable. So you can put those filters and narrow down the list of patients on the uh, application. In case you would like to 
in case you would like to reset, then you have a reset button available. Uh, this one. So you can click on the reset button and the app will automatically reset the filters and you again be taken to the default status, which shows us the, the large list of patients or large list of contacts which are registered in the program. Okay. Next. So this was the filters where you can put the fil the uh, filtering based on the enrollment date, the status of enrollment, the event date, etc. But if you want to filter by patient values or the information which is filled for each patient, then you click on the search icon. It will load the list of attributes which are searchable for the COVID contact registration and follow-up program. So for example, you only want to see the, the registrations where the country of residence was China. So you can select China in the country of residence and click on search icon. It will narrow down to the list of people who had their country residence as China. Okay, So you can put filters based on the, the enrollment event variables and the status of enrollment, status of events. But you can also put filters by the searchable fields which are defined for your specific program. Okay. <clears throat> So you can put both these filters together. You can put enrollments last month and you can put country residence as China. So it will further drill down or narrow down to number of uh, patients who or number of contacts who were registered last month and in their country of residence, they had reported to uh, as China. So then you can select uh, multiple filters, both for variables as well as the attributes for which you're collecting the data. So in case you want to reset, go again on the search button <clears throat> it will again show the list of attributes to you go on the search icon there's a reset button at the bottom you click on the reset button and it will again go back to its default configuration which was the default list of contacts which were registered in the program now, uh, the maps component of the Android application, as I mentioned yesterday and during the webinar also, it is integrated with the either Google Maps or whatever maps application you use in your device. So, for example, you want to see information for one person. <clears throat> one. Yeah, so we were discussing about mapping the uh, the location of an individual uh, which is registered in the application to and using the maps application which is installed in your device. So you can select one individual and then you have this directions icon given on the uh, app here. You click on the directions icon. And this will ask you which application to use. So I'm selecting the default Google Maps application. So now this will open the, the coordinates of the tagged entity instance uh, in your Maps application. And if you want to see the distance from your location 
to this respective contact. You can use the inbuilt features for Google Maps to uh, choose your select location. So I can select my home and then I can see what's the best route available for this respective uh, case. So these requirements came from the community themselves during the COVID uh, pandemic where uh, apart from the COVID services, there were many things which uh, the health workers were uh, kind of the linkage between the patient and the, the clinic uh, did uh, suffer because of COVID-19. So there may have many use cases which were presented to us where they wanted to home deliver the ARV drugs to the uh, HIV positive patients. So there they wanted to know that from the current location of the community worker, uh, how far or where is the uh, the home location of the HIV positive person so that they could visit and resupply their ARV drugs. So based on those requirements that we received from the community, this feature was developed where you can, uh, from the location of the, the fragmented instance, you can measure your current location and see the distance and you can reach to that specific uh, place where the residence is, where the uh, pregnancy instance is supposed to uh, reside. <clears throat> so this feature was newly introduced. So this is a pretty handy feature which could be utilized um, for many use cases. Next, we have the layers that could be added uh, for the uh, maps component. So below the search button, the second option is the layers option. You click on the layers option and you will see what kind of coordinates you can use here. So you can use the coordinates of the tagged entity instance. You can use the enrollment coordinates. You can use the relationships and you can also use the heat map layer. Okay. So for this demonstrations, we will, we are, We'll continue to use TEI coordinates, but we'll change the view to satellite view. So you can change the view between the two default views which are available, satellite view and the street view. So these, these layers can be uh, done. <clears throat> then if you want to use the, the heat map feature, then you can uh, deselect the TEI coordinates and select the heat map layer and apply. So this will give you the heat map. For example, the the larger is the the volume of the uh, circle. That means larger patients are, caught, are concentrated in this area. So you could deselect the TEI coordinates and deselect the TEI coordinates and uh, uh, use the heat map option to see the list of. Um, <clears throat> uh, the concentration of cases in that respective area. So you could use that as well. Okay. Then the last part is, uh, let me just reset. So I'll go back to street view and show TI coordinates and remove heat map layer and click on apply. So now I'm on the default view, which is this one. Next, if I want to center the map to my current location, I have the third option available here below the maps layer. So if I click on this, then it will point to my current location. So if I want to see my current location as default, then I can click on this and it will take me up to my current location, okay? So I'll stop here. So there is uh, the first exercise which is given in the learner's guide. So we will take around uh, eight to 10 minutes. Uh, let's do that exercise. And then we resume with the next part of uh, the session. If there are any questions, please feel free to put on uh, either the Zoom chat or Slack. We'll answer them badly.
Okay, so let's move ahead. Uh, so now we'll have a, uh, have a look at the second part of the Android analytics features, which are tracked entity instant analytics. So now with these new features that have been brought in, it is possible to display the evolution of numerical data, especially uh, within a tracker program where you can see these data as charts. Uh, you can see these data as charts, values, and tables within the Android application. Right now, this uh, this uh, feature is only available for the data elements, uh, which are using numerical value types across repeatable program stages. So, for example, if I am uh, tracking patients for a non-communicable disease program and I want to monitor the weight of the patient across first and the follow-up visits, then I can create a chart of the patient's weight status in each visit the patient in visits to the clinic. Okay. So data elements which are of numeric type <clears throat> will automatically appear in the analytics menu as we had discussed yesterday as well. So we'll see some examples on how this feature can be used for individual patient monitoring through the uh, to the Android application. Okay. So let's go to COVID contact registration and follow up program. And let's look for a patient named Carlos. So let me search for a person. I'll put the name as Carlos Barker. So I have this patient now. I click on the record. <clears throat> so as we had discussed yesterday, on the tragnant instance or the patient or the contact dashboard, you have four icons given below. You have the details. You have the, the uh, indicators or the analytics icon. You have the relationship icon and you have the notes button. Okay. So let's click on the indicators icon. There you will see some charting is available for the data which is numeric in nature and which has been collected across different visits so this was a covid contact case who was followed up for symptom screening and as part of the symptom screening he the data for weight and the daily temperature was measured so based on the data that was entered in the device for the symptoms program stage which was of repeatable nature so based on the events, uh, the dates at which the information was collected, the app automatically plotted a chart for that respective person for the fluctuations in weight or the <coughs> the, um, uh, the the charting of values of weight that were collected over a period of time. Similar, you see below as the temperature. So uh, the temperature values which were added, uh, those can also be repre uh, represented. So this is dummy data. So you may see abnormal fluctuations, but then if you're using this feature and add real data, then you could plot these charts for uh, different variables, which are of number type. So right now it will pick up the, the variables, which are of type number by default, but in the future releases, we'll see the user can select what data elements they want to use on the Android application so that it doesn't automatically create these charts for all the number type uh, variables because all of them might not make sense to see in a chart or, a, uh, or, or charting fashion for a specific uh, variable in a specific program. So you will be able to select this moving forward. Then you can click on this ellipsis icon next to each chart, these three dots. You'll see some options to view this as bar so you can see this these values as bars as well you can put them in a table so you can see that you can either put them in a uh, view as value so you can do that so if you do view as value then the information available in in the last or the latest event will be shown here and you can go back to the view as line which was a default arrangement you can also put uh, filters here so you can click on the ellipses icon, put filters for periods. If you want to see monthly values, you can do last three months. And then it will ask you if you want to include the current period as well. So if you do it, yes, then it will switch the chart to 
uh, all the values uh, which have been captured in a month on different events in the last three months. So you can put the, the values together. So you may have, say, if you're doing NCD programming, doing monthly visits. So you will have the data for all the visits the patient has made, but you want to strictly focus upon the data for the last three months, then you can put these filters and see data for last three months only. So it will take the events which happened in the last three months and the value of weight, which is given here. So you can see the trend of weight, the patient's weight across the visits made in last three months, okay? <clears throat> so if you want to reset, you can click on the reset button. So it will switch to the default mode where it will show data for all the events, okay? So this way you can uh, put in the uh, filters for uh, the, uh, a period and you can also put filters for organization humans as well okay so this is how you can see the evolution of uh, data for certain variables across the patient's visits which happen uh, at the facility and then you can observe these variables so the most crucial examples are the weight weight uh, charting you can do charting for blood sugar levels you can do charting for uh, say um, creatinine levels if you are measuring if you're looking at ncd and all the important test parameters then you can you can do this is the app will do automatic charting but in moving forward you'll be able to select for what variables you want to do this charting so that it only shows the charting for the variables where it makes sense for uh, the charting to be done for the clinician okay <clears throat> so now you have the exercise Two in the learner's guide. So we'll again break for five minutes, uh, quickly uh, do the exercise from the learner's guide, exercise two. Then we'll move towards the, the program indicators uh, section, how you can see the summary of the, the record uh, using program indicators as well.
All right. Let's move on to the next part. So we saw the charting of data elements, uh, which can allow you to see the evolution of data across repeatable uh, program stages for all the variables which are of uh, type number. Now let's have a look at the, the program indicators, how the program indicators can be used to create a summary of important parameters for a patient. So we all know program indicators allow us to aggregate uh, patient data from the which is captured in the tracker data model to um, to aggregate as as counts uh, sums and averages of different variables depending upon what we want to measure for that specific uh, 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 indicator so when you're creating a program indicator in the configuration you can there's an option to uh, select display in program so the options when you select display in program these indicators which are sele selected with this option they are the ones which are visible on the android application as well so we'll take one example from the covid vaccination program where we can see the information for the individual in the program and also within the program stage so in the vaccination program i'll search for an individual named uh, Melissa Ortich. So let me search for that person so that we can see some data. Melissa. <clears throat> okay, so in this patient record, again, you'll see the same interface you have the details icon in the bottom of the screen next you have the indicators or the analytics icon if you click on the analytics icon you'll see the list of indicators which have been configured and these indicators are marked as uh, display uh, for display while configuring those program indicators so the ones which are marked for display they are displayed here in the app itself so if you want to show the the patient age as per the latest event the information which is which might be vital for a clinician to uh, which would be important for a clinician to know that the client is a health worker and if uh, there are any risk factors associated with this client so before the vaccination you're doing some pre-immunization questions so those are important so those can be shown as a summary over here and then again if you are doing total doses required for vaccination product so those can be plotted as well which might not make sense altogether, but then since it is one of the uh, uh, numeric data element, it has created the chart itself, but it later on you'll be able to filter the data elements for which you want to create these charts for, okay? So this is the overall, within the overall program, but you can even see the summary in respective stages. So if you go to the latest event, which has been added for this individual, that is on 25th of uh, July, So you can click on the latest record. The program stage will open up. So within the uh, program stage, if you go to the options below, you will again see a charting icon available here. Once you click on that, you can see the summary of the case and the vital information which you want to show to the clinician or to the health worker. So again, the age, the information, risk factors, 
and the vaccine that they previously taken, those indicators can be configured and can be shown on the indicators tab as well. So this way you can configure the indicators and mark them as display in program so that they can be shown on both the web instance where you can see uh, on tracker capture web and then you can also see the same on the Android application under the analytics icon. So this way you can create a summary of the vital information for each person and show those summary within the, the application. So now you have the exercise three in the learner's guide. Uh, so please perform the exercise three uh, and we'll take a break for 15 minutes now before we resume the latter half of the session. So currently it's 1.35. So let's join back as at 1.50 local time. So 15 minutes from now, we resume with the next part. In the meanwhile, you can quickly do the exercise three in the learner's guide and also uh, uh, take a break as well. So we resume in 15 minutes.
All right. Uh, I hope all are back from the break so we can continue with the discussions. So before we move further to uh, the remaining sessions, uh, we just wanted to highlight some important considerations which you need to make. So all the analytics that we have seen in the anode application, uh, the data aggregation happens offline with the data which is stored on the device only. And so if you have data for say 50 people or 100 people for vaccination registry, then your uh, data aggregation which is happening offline uh, or the charting which is happening is only on the basis of the patient's record available on the device. It doesn't take into account the patients which are which may be online, uh, which may be available in the database, but they're not available on the device. As we mentioned yesterday that there are certain limitations which are kept into account to restrict the number of patients and events that we can download on the Android uh, application. So therefore, um, therefore we need to keep into account that all this analytics is happening offline within the device and, uh, um, and uh, once you delete the data from the app, then the analytics also goes away with it. So just to test that, what you can do is you can go to the settings menu and go to settings. Let me see, I think it's my screen sharing is hanged. I'll just quickly reset it. So in the settings menu, you have an option for delete local data. So you can delete your uh, local data from the app. So once you delete this, then all the visualizations and the analytics that you were seeing in the application, they will also go away. Okay. So just to, just to tell you that all these analytics which you see on the application, these are all uh, based on the local data which is stored in a device. So if I delete my local data and click on accept, and I click on accept, the app will refresh itself and it will delete all local data available. So now you see there are zero persons available. So I don't have any people enrolled in my program. So along with that, all the analytics that was shown offline or from the data within the device, that also uh, goes away. Okay. So <clears throat> just considerations, if you implement the Android uh, analytics, you must know that this data is coming from the data available on the device and it, it does not take the entire set of records which are available on the web as well. So this will only be your device specific uh, analytics. Okay. okay, so then we'll have a look at how we can configure the um, these visualizations, the dashboard features on the Android application. So there is a specific app to do that, which is uh, plugged in on the web version. That's called Android web settings application. So we'll have a look at that and see how you can group your uh, 
dashboard visualizations which you have created on the web version through data visualizer uh, etc and those can be grouped together to build a sort of dashboard on the android uh, application so we'll switch over to the web version now and have a look at that All right, so now we're on the web version here. So we're on the exercise instance. So you can either use the demo, the exercise, the exercise instance for your own evaluation. So in the app drawer, you have an application called Android settings. So this is a web application which allows you to set default global settings within the applications. And all these settings which you apply here, they are pushed to all the devices when the devices are getting synchronized mainly for the configuration so you can define multiple factors from here uh, such as the setting up the general settings for the device you can set up some global settings like how often should the metadata sync how often should data sync so you can define a frequency here and <clears throat> the same frequency gets applied to all the devices and the users cannot change it because these are global settings which are applied then for program, you can define how many maximum tagged entity instance download you can do in uh, one device and which TAs you can download, all statuses, all statuses, or you can only do active downloads. And then you can define for time period also that you want all the people who are registered in last three months, they can also get downloaded uh, or updated in last three months. So you can define certain filters. So these are default global settings which are automatically selected. But if you want to make a change, then you can make this change as well. But then uh, there are certain limits. So you can't allow more than 2000 targeted instance downloads and 2000 events download because we have to keep into account of the storage of the uh, storage available on the Android app as well. Hence, there are limitations put in. So these are global settings. But if you want to set up for uh, different programs you want to add different sort of settings and you can do that so you can update this to 1500 uh, and then you can also update this you can by save program so now if the configuration sync happens for the data and the metadata for this specific program you'll have 1500 instances downloaded by default for vaccination registry the rest for others you'll only stick to 500 so you can either follow the global settings or you can um <clears throat> do program specific settings as well yeah so the the options that we're going to discuss uh are basically for the analytics how we can group the visualizations together on a mobile app uh, dashboard so for this we'll go to the analytics section and click on the home button so here you will have to add these home visualizations so these are basically a group of dashboards a group of charts that you're trying to create and to make them available on the Android uh, application. So in order to add a home visualization, you click on add home visualization. And just to keep into account, uh, this the addition of these visualizations is only applicable for the super user. So the person who has the authority in the system as a super user, only they can add or update the existing visualizations. The default user, will not have the authority to the end user will not have the authority to add or update these charts because these are more or less standard dashboard items which you're trying to push from the web version to the android application and these charts will only take up the local data which is available on the device so therefore these setups and all configuration is only limited to the super users mm -hmm. so in order to add a visualization, you select add visualization and then you get a list of dashboard items which are available so the charts or the tables or single value charts you have created already in your data visualizer application you can select from that for example i'd select the vaccination uptake 
and I'll select the chart here. <clears throat> I'll add the visualization title. Now this is optional. If you add, then this will override the name of your favorite. So I'll just copy this part and add it here. Now you're creating a, a group of charts similar to what you create as a tab on your uh, default web dashboards. Okay. So you can click use as a group visualization. If there's an existing group, you can update the this item into that existing group. But right now we don't have a group. So we'll select create a new group and give it a name vaccine update. Okay. And then we click on add on visualization. So now we have a vaccine update group in which we have one chart mapped, which is complete vaccination update. Okay. Now I want to add one more home visualization. So I can click on add home visualization. Again, look for uh, a chart. So let's select COVID vaccine uptake last month. So I'd select this pie chart. Again, give it a name. But now I want to uh, add this chart into an existing group which I have created. So I'll select select a created group visualization and add to vaccine update and add, add to visualization. So within the existing home visualization group, this chart has been added okay, to vaccine update. So you can create multiple groups and update your groups with the charts that you want to show on the Android application. Okay. So once you've done this, click on save. So your uh, visualizations that you've created will now get stored in the web application. And these can be further pushed to the Android devices and uh, can, can these visualizations can be used with the data which is already available on the device, okay? So there's an exercise, I guess, uh, for adding these visualizations. No, no, there's no exercise because we don't have the super user authority. Okay. Can I have a quick question, Tora? Sorry. Yes, Zubair. Sorry, I'm, I'm slowing you down, but I'll make it quick. Uh, in, in, in the previous window, you have shown us that we can create custom settings for specific programs, like how yeah. much, how many entities should be uh, downloaded in the Android app. Then on the right top of that, there was an option, all organization units. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Because if a user is collecting data at the BHU at facility one, then if we select here that all of the organization units has to be taken into account, yes, here, then whether it will be all of the unit uh, from the top level hierarchy or- No, no, this is it? based on the ones which are assigned to the user. So if I have one clinic, then that's all I have. So it will just take into that organization unit into account. So if we select all organization units, only those which are, which are assigned, which are assigned. If I have more than one, then you can do per org unit. So if I have two clinics assigned, then it will take 500 tag entity instances per org unit. So total will become thousand. Okay. But if I do all org unit, then mm -hmm. it will just take up total 500. Right. Right. So, you okay. can, so you can you can uh, adjust accordingly. So what do you want? So if I have one, then all is equal to one. But if I have more than one, then I can set it up accordingly. Right. Okay. So if 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 uh, uh, to my understanding, if I understand correctly, so all of the organization you know assigned to the user will will be catered for with this setting, right? And with no descendants. Yeah, so this will override all the global settings. So for all the users under this program, these settings will be followed for this specific program only. But for other programs, you'll have the default settings which are applicable by default in the app. So these ones are the default. Default, yeah. If you do a program specific setting, then you can do a program specific setting. All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Can you do a sort of a quick recap of what you have done up to now yeah. on this dashboard? <clears throat> so basically, uh, for adding these dashboards, uh, as your um, mobile view of the dashboards which are there, which will use the offline uh, data, which is available on the device, you need to add these visualizations uh, through the Android uh, web settings application. 
you need to have a super user access for being able to add these visualizations. So similar to the web version, where if I go to dashboards, you have the options to add these tabs and one dashboard then becomes a group of dashboard items, which you assemble together to create one dashboard tab. So one dashboard tab here is equivalent to one visualization group in which you can have multiple options, multiple charts added in one group. So if you want to say create uh, one uh, group of visualizations for COVID-19 case surveillance and one group of visualizations for COVID-19 vaccinations, you can create two groups here and each group will have a set of charts available for you to uh, analyze the information. Okay. So I have an existing group added here. Maybe I can just delete that. So if you don't have any home visualizations added, then it will show you a message that could not find any home visualizations. If in order to add one, you click on add home visualization and select a visualization item. So this will give you the list of favorites, which are there already configured on your web instance. Okay, so you're not creating anything new for the Android. You're you reusing the dashboard items or favorites which are created for the uh, for the Android application. So these are the, the dashboard items which already exist. So I'll just select one of them. Go back, complete vaccination update. Now adding a visualization title is optional. If I don't add a visualization title, then it will take up the same heading as per the favorite, which is already stored on the web version. So I'll just copy this and I'll put it here. Now, if I have an existing group available, I can add this home visualization to an existing group, but right now I don't have. So I select create a new group and give it a new name. So I, this is basically giving a name to the to the dashboard tab which you are creating okay so like here you gave a name covenant surveillance tracker similarly you're creating a dashboard group or a visualization group under which you can add multiple favorites okay so then you can click on add home visualization <clears throat> so i've added one group of visualizations and i've mapped one dashboard item to that respective group similarly i can add either update an existing group or add a new group altogether. So again, click on add home visualization, select a dashboard chart, which is already available, add a title. Now, if I want to create a new group, I can create a new group. But if I want to add this to an existing group, which is available, then I can click on select a created group of visualization and select a group here vaccine uptake, which I just created. Okay. And click on add room. So now I have one more I have one more uh, chart added to my group of visualizations that I just created. So this way you can create your uh, group of visualizations, which are basically a group of chart items which you can put together on the mobile application. So once you're done, you can click on the save button and the settings are then uh, successfully uh, saved, okay? So, the, the only caveat here is that this is limited to the users who have super user access and uh, uh, can add these visualizations for the end users. So the end users will be able to see these two charts, one say a bar chart and a pie chart, and then those pie charts and bar, bar charts will get created or will get uh, filled by the data which is available on the app so if my app has data for 500 patients or 500 pregnancy instances then my charts will show data for those 500 only it will not take into account the other thousand cases which are available in the central database but will only take into account the data which is available on the local uh, device so this is a consideration which needs to be kept into account. So uh, now, if uh, admin created this uh, sort of a 
uh, da dashboard uh, stuff into another user. So if my limit is 500, uh, but whereas once the admin is creating this one, there might be about 1,000 or 1,005 odd number uh, patient. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how it transform into the Android wash version? Does it going to seal up in 500 level or what is going to happen? So your this is a visualization that you're trying to create. Then this visualization will get populated based on the number of patients which are available on your Android device. So if you only have 100 patients as of now, so then it will show the breakup of that respective chart or pie chart or line chart based on the data which is available. So it will only break up, show the breakup of 100 cases. As you add more cases, the, the charts will keep on updating automatically because they're working offline. They are picking data from your local device memory and showing it on your uh, Android app. Okay. Now, if uh, over a period of time, you keep adding more patients, but the device is set to store 500 most latest tracked entity instances, so any updates which are made to track identity instances on the app or on the web simultaneously, whenever you do a synchronization, the app will update itself and always keep a record of those 500 most recent enrollments or 500 most recent track identity instances for which the updates were made in the database. So the charts will take up those 500 cases which are most updated and are part of your device. Okay. So this is how it works in long term that it will take up the data which is available on the device. Now your web instance might have 1500 more patients, but your app cannot store the entire data for the entire population. So if I have a hospital with a catchment area of say 1 lakh people to vaccinate, then the app will not uh, download 1 lakh records because we need to keep a limit noting that the storage on the device might be limited. Okay, So therefore we through these Android settings app, we can set up what is the maximum amount we can want to download in an Android device and how latest should that data be. So that if I have come for vaccination today and my next dose is due in 28 days, so then that's one of the latest record I should have on my device because if I walk into the clinic and the clinic doesn't have internet connection available, the clinic should be able to access my record because I am part of the latest data which was captured in last three months. So I will be available offline on that respective device and uh, I can be then uh, uh, selected or searched offline and data entry could be done here. So the premise is that whatever data is available on your device, the app will do offline aggregation of data within that device and show that on these charts that you're selecting. So on web version, if you see this chart, it may have data for one lakh cases, but on the device, it will show only data for those 500 cases, which are part of the, the, the Android local storage. Okay. I, I hope that's clear now. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So are there any questions uh, for the topics that we've covered till now? If there are, uh, you could add to the chat or please unmute yourself and ask those questions. Uh, there are some questions which are, which have been requested for repetition based on uh, the day one uh, sessions that we did yesterday. So we can cover those as well. So um, there is one exercise left for five and six to, uh, sorry, exercise, uh, six basically to put visualization filters we'll put that exercise on hold for now we're facing some troubles with the with pushing the uh, vaccination the, the charts that we've created to the app so if you're able to resolve it in next 10 minutes we will demonstrate that in case the issue persists then we'll cover that before we begin the topics for uh, tomorrow um so in the meanwhile, if there are any questions, we could discuss those. And uh, yeah, if you have time and uh, yeah. is permeable within the framework, uh, shall we see the other functions of the program data set and TEI under the analytics? Yeah. Okay. So again, TE analytics is for the tracker programs only, and the settings will apply to all tracker programs the user has access to. 
so you can define your program uh, program stage um, and you can define as i mentioned that uh, you can create your ti analytics based on so right now it was taking all variables by number type but this is still under development where you can create uh, analytics chart title for uh, the data elements of your choice so for example if you want to say weight monitoring if if weight data is being collected so then you can select that and you can select say line chart you can choose a period type say daily and you can choose their data element then there's that data element has to be uh, a part of your uh, program which you can assign so you can choose the element from here so for example uh, you want to see uh, so this may not be the best example here so let me just change it to symptoms say wait <clears throat> Let's do line chart, period type daily, data element, and you can say contact rate. Okay. So now you are adding an analytics item for a tracked entity instance. So you also see you have the option to select WHO nutrition. So if you're doing a use case where you are tracking children for nutrition, then you can select WHO nutrition and then you can have the Z score charts, the growth charts for height for eight, height for weight, height for age, weight for age, weight for height. So you can select those and then you can select your axes. So what do you want on the X axis? What do you want the Y axis? So <clears throat> this way you can configure your TI analytics, which you want to show on the Android application for each individual uh, tracked identity instance based on the information that is stored. So if I'm doing WHO nutrition charts, then I need to select say the, uh, the gender because it has different definitions for uh, male and female. So we can have female, male, if you want to put say weight here and then if you're collecting height then you can put height as well so this is not the best example because the contact program doesn't capture the height just capturing weight but if you're doing a, a nutrition uh, surveillance program then you can set up individual growth charts for each tei so this is how you can create here and add that to your tei analytics so any individual charting which you want to do you can set it up here and uh put here for use on the android okay home is again as we saw this is the total kind of uh, uh parallel version of a dashboard that you create so when you log in you have the dashboard tab and you can see the dashboards there so this is where we are facing an issue so we are trying to resolve it <clears throat> if you want to do within a program then you can select from the existing uh program visualizations so this becomes for specific program. So when you go into your, so the difference between home and program and data set is home is basically you get this option to view the data on the home page itself. So you will have an icon on the app to show this data on the home page. So this is basically a replica of the web dashboard where you have the home page of the web as your dashboard here. Also, when you log in into the Android app, if you have these visualizations set up, then this will this is available on the home screen. But for program and data set, you'll have to go into individual program and check the analytics which you have configured for that program and that data set specifically. The same you can do here. You can do you want to do for a specific program, then you can select the the visualization items that you've already created. For example, I want to select say a vaccination one underlying condition uh or we can maybe take another program which is more more relevant um, yeah so you can say it's a lab confirmed cases so it will pick up the data for all the cases which were confirmed via lab result either rapid test or pcr test so then whatever data is shown in this visualization whatever indicators selected in this visualization that could be viewed within the program so when we were doing the um 
the program indicator uh, analysis, you had uh, the indicator icon there, then you can have a similar dashboard item for that specific program, and then you can see the visualizations there. So we'll try to uh, reset these uh, aspects and uh, uh, we'll try to show that tomorrow if it doesn't work today. And then so that you can see how you can see these examples. So the examples on how these uh, features are available, uh, the screenshots of those are available in your learner's guide. So that I can quickly review. So what we are seeing is that we have set up the... Uh, the the home visualizations so these were the two groups the charts that we added so next on the on the uh, just let me see if you can see my screen so in your learner's guide you can see some examples on how these visualizations will look like so i had created a vaccination vaccine uptake uptake group and it had two charts, one bar chart, one pie chart. So this is how you'll see on the homepage. So on the homepage, you'll have this indicators icon or this bar icon where you can see the visualizations that you have set up under the home category. So you can see all the charts here. And then these charts can be added as filters. You can select periods. Uh, you can select uh say last six months and then you can see the data for last six months for the patients who are currently part of your android app database okay so that's the most important implication which you need to keep into account then you have the rendering you can convert these charts into line charts table of values so by default it will take up the chart type which is available on the web version so on the web if you selected a pie chart then we'll take it up as a pie chart on the web if uh, the default chart type was uh, a bar chart but on the android you want to change the uh, rendering then you can do it on the android uh, app itself okay and then you can put filters for periods and org units as well so if you have access to multiple clinics then you can put uh, filters for org units as well but if you have access to only one clinic then by default that would be your uh, default organization unit which you can use then you have the limitations review available here in your learner's guide uh, as well. So all the chart types are currently not supported. There are limited chart types which are supported on the Android application. So when you're configuring your home visualizations or program visualizations, uh, please ensure that your default chart type on of the favorite which you've created on the web version is amongst these. So it can be a pivot table, can be a column chart, can be a line chart, can be a pie chart, razor chart, single value. So these are the ones which are supported at present. And in subsequent releases, you will have the support added for other chart items as well. So you can add the number of headers, lines and columns are restricted to one right now. Uh, in terms of the configuration of tables, uh, the number of series uh, for a table, there are no limitation, but you can add uh, uh, n number of data elements when you're creating a pivot table, but just ensure that you're entering this on a small screen. So the uh, keep only your app number of indicators or data elements which you want to visualize on locally on the app itself. So the design matters on how you create your favorites. So choose the most required indicators so that they are part of your uh, a chart. And if you add more, then you're cramming up a lot of you're cramming up a lot of information you're cramming up a lot of information in a small space uh, <clears throat> so keep into account that how these are uh, how how the charts are configured when you're making them specifically for use on android as well then only relative periods are available right now this month last month so all the relative periods which are part of the existing visualizer app they're supported the fixed period are not supported so only uh, relative periods are supported at present Access is limited to at least one org unit level. So either it could be the user org unit that I have, or if I have access to say the district on my Android user, then I can select all the facilities below it. So depending upon how my user has been configured, I can get access to the user org unit. I can get access to uh, the organic children or organic grandchildren. So at a time, I can select one single organic level to drill down that data. 
Now, again, that drill in down will always work on the local data, which is available. It will not take the web data into account. Okay. And user has a view access to the visage sharing settings. So when you're creating your favorites, uh, ensure that you're setting those visualizations uh, as view access so that the Android user can view those visualizations as well. Okay. So there is a uh, documentation available to discuss the limitations and the features that are supported at present for Android analytics, specifically for these, uh, these mobile app dashboards. So you can review and read those. And of course, there are a lot of development happening and there's a lot of feedback coming in from the end users. So you should, you can expect more features to be introduced as we, as we move uh, forward. Um, <clears throat> So you can review the documents to get more understanding. If you're trying to set up these Android specific dashboards, then you uh, can, uh, you should take these uh, reflections into account. Okay. So uh, we can break for five minutes. I'll quickly try to sort out this issue. If we're able to do it now, I'll quickly demonstrate. If not, then we uh, take it up uh, tomorrow and we close the session before we move on to the new uh, topics. In the meanwhile, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to put on chat or you can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, I'll give an update quickly after next five minutes on the steps ahead. Uh, if you can, uh, uh, please briefly explain about uh, this. Uh, referral option uh, on yesterday uh, thing after our five minutes break. Sure, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. So referrals are basically, um, the functionality where you want to give access of the patient's record to another facility now for a certain event now this could be a one-time access or it could be a permanent referral okay so we'll consider two scenarios here for example i am taking my antiretroviral care for example at one organization unit and i am migrating to another district for say better work opportunity. So now I inform my clinic that from next month onwards, I'll not be able to make a visit to say your health facility and uh, I'll be transferring to this respective district. So now it is to maintain the continuity of care for uh, the individual. It is the onus of the facility person to ensure that they refer you uh, to the ARV center, which is uh, <clears throat> there in the new district where I'm moving to. Okay. So there you have the option to do these referrals. Maybe I can change the program here. So for example, in Nepal, they use DHIS2 as their uh, uh, central system for managing clients for HIV and ART treatment. So there they do frequent referrals so of patients across the health facility. So if I am migrating to say from district A to district B, then you can refer me through the system to the uh, new organization unit. Okay. So <clears throat> for doing so, you need to say do a referral of this respective case. Maybe I can just check if it works here. So now in this case, it needs a permanent referral because I am sending that record to the next facility. Okay, But then uh, it may or may not be applicable to uh, my specific use case. So you can't use it everywhere. But in this case, we're using. So I create a referral, a permanent referral, I'll select that the next ART follow-up should happen at facility B. So I create a referral. I denote it as an event that the next ART follow-up should happen at facility B. And I create a permanent referral. So automatically the system will create a record for facility B, an event for facility B. 
and through this referral my the ownership of my uh, my record is then transferred to facility b okay so you see here you have owned by chw mahasot now if i refer this patient to another chw and i do a permanent referral and then the ownership will change so now facility b is the owner of my record and facility b will be able to access oh, drive again or facility b will be able to access my record and get continue my <clears throat> so this way you can use referrals where uh, um, you can use referrals where you want to permanently move a patient from one facility to another and give access to that respective patients I'll check if we can do referrals in this example. Okay, so I don't see that button. Yeah, active. I can check if I can do it. <clears throat> so here, uh, I want to refer this patient for a lab request to another organization unit. So my referrals are always associated to an event. I can't do a referral without associating it to a service. Okay. So in the example that I discussed before, the ART follow-up is a service which the patient has to take to continue his treatment. So here I want to move this patient for say permanently and to get a lab test done. So I'll select uh, organization unit. So I want to move this patient here and the lab request date is for say tomorrow. So I'm transferring this patient to this particular CHW to get a lab test done. If for me, the reagents or I can't do a test here today or tomorrow due to certain reasons. So then you have two options, one time and move permanently. Okay. If you're permanently moving, then you are handing over the ownership of the entire patient record to the facility. But if you're doing as a one-off instance, you don't want to refer that patient permanently, then you can select one-time referral. Okay? So if I do move permanently, then it will ask me. And now it has added a uh, event already <clears throat> for the next clinic where I should visit. And the ownership has changed to the next clinic where I should visit. So because of this change of the ownership, now, the new user at facility B will be able to access my record and add data for services, which they are giving. They'll be able to see the services which I've taken in the last clinic, but they won't be able to edit that data because they don't have the ownership of the events added at facility A. They only have the ownership to add events at facility B. So this is how the referrals work in real scenario where you want to uh, transfer the record of a patient from one facility to another based on a service. So it has to be based on a specific event through which you can do a, a referral. <clears throat> so now this could be both a one time or a, a permanent referral, depending upon why you are making these referrals to, uh, to, to uh, the next uh, facility. Now this could be on the patient's request or this can also be because the facility is shutting down. So it has to transfer all its patients to a new facility. So it, you can do permanent referrals in that case as well. So Nepal, they use this. So uh, they have some additional features which they have custom developed where um, <clears throat> right now there are no incoming notifications that a patient has been referred to my facility. So there we have done some custom apps where they get a list of incoming patients from different health facility based on the referrals. So they can see that how many patients they're expecting as referred patients from which facility and when are they supposed to arrive. So if they don't show up, then you can they can do a follow up to ensure that the patient remains on care. So this is how the whole workflow of referrals can be uh, built in for, uh, for, for different health programs, depending upon the requirements. So I hope that's clear. If there any questions on that, please feel free to ask. Yeah, thank you very much. It's very clear. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? If time permits, uh, shall we see the other functionalities of the Android uh, uh, that uh, 
customization part, what you have told, it is very understandable and it's a very amazing feature. If possible, please the, show the other functions also time available. Uh, for the Android settings app? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. In the website. Sure, let me, let me go to the settings option. So I think let's break for five minutes. In the meanwhile, I'll try to sort the issue. Uh, if it doesn't clear up today, then we can do a quick overview again for the settings app and uh, continue with the small session on Android tomorrow before we proceed to the, the usual agenda for the day. So let's take a break for five minutes and then we come back, okay? <coughs>
All right, so uh, we've got the issue resolved now. So I can share my screen. Yeah. So uh, we had set up the home visualization. So if you have home visualization uh, set up already on your instance for in the Android uh, web settings app, so you'll see this indicator icon in at the bottom of the screen. If you click on that, then it will take you to the charts that you had added as part of your uh, visualization group that we had created. So there was some issue with the sharing settings, but we made it work. So I had added two favorites, which are already created on the web version. One was for the complete vaccination uptake and the other was vaccine uptake last month. So now this is being created these charts are being created by the data which is available on the local device at present now if i clean this data from my device then these charts will also become blank because there is no data available on the device okay so you need to ensure that if you're using these charts your device should have data available in the local storage so that these charts can be created so these these are offline analytics the feature set is called offline analytics reason being that it will take up data uh, in your device, uh, whether it is synced or not synced with the uh, web server. So even if your 10 records are not synced, they'll still be part of your these charts because this analytics works offline with over the local data storage is available. So as we saw that you should, uh, if you're on the exercise instance, you should be able to see these charts. What you need to do is you need to go to the settings and sync your configuration. So click on sync configuration now. What the app will do is it will download the vaccination vaccine update group that you had created. Uh, the vaccine up, vaccine uptake visualization group that you had created on the settings app and it will download that on the device. Okay. So if you want to see the the visualization that we had created on your own device, just go to settings click on sync configuration now once you do that you should be able to see the indicators icon at the bottom when you click on it you'll be able to see two charts because in the visualization group that we created we only added two charts there hence you see two charts now here you can <clears throat> make those changes you can see this data as a line you can see this data as a table depending upon uh, your uh, interest and then you can make these changes okay view as value okay so view as value will always show you the latest uh, the latest information available in the uh, in the device okay as per the events added you can put filters for period also now this is taking for daily so i'm just doing random entry right now maybe it will work maybe it won't yeah it worked so it is now showing you data for the last month based on the filter that I selected. Okay, if I can reset that, then I can put filter for organic also. So I want to select. So now it depends on the access that I have. So right now in the outputs, I have access to the loud data, but in the inputs, I might not have access to all these. So I'll only see the data which is available for that facility which I've added. So I have access to three clinics. So I've added a filter to one of the clinics so i see data for that specific clinic only so i can again go here <clears throat> and select more than one so it changes okay so depending upon my access i can make these uh changes to the charts which are there and i can also reset them okay so this completes the whole cycle where you started with creating your home visualizations in the Android web settings app. So I can do a quick review of that as well. And then how you can pull those home visualizations into your uh, the Android app as well through syncing your configurations once you have set it up on the web instance. Okay. <clears throat> so this is also linked to your exercise for in the learner's guide so you have exercise um exercise five i guess yeah exercise five 
and six. So you can do those now. So you should get access to the uh, these these chart items on the Android app. So just sync your configuration and just check if you get the access. If you get the access, then you can do exercise five and six uh, from the learner's guide. In case any issues, just let us know. Uh, we can further uh, update this. Okay. okay. So if there are any questions, then we could take up now or we can do a quick recap of the how we set these dashboards up on the web settings app and how they are pulled on the Android app. So we can have a quick review of that again. Okay. So if there are no more questions, I can go ahead and do a review of that and then I can take up questions at the end. Then. Okay. So I'll go to the uh, I'll go to the web version again. And uh, have a look at the Android settings app. <clears throat> so you see two charts on the app. These are shown because I have added these two charts here in the home visualization, which I created. I can add more charts as well. So if I want to add, for example, this, then I can select the favorite. So the prerequisite is that for pushing these charts to the Android app, you must have these favorites created already on your web instance. So these are nothing but your dashboard favorites, which you have already created. Those are being pushed to the Android device via this configuration so that you can see these charts with the local data, which is available on the Android device. And these charts will get updated as you, uh, <clears throat> as more data comes in into the app offline or online. So it will work both ways, but then it will always have a restriction that it will only show the totals based on the total data available on the Android device, not as per what is available on the web version, which can be much, much higher than what is available on the Android device. Okay. So you can add uh, to this existing uh, version as well, existing group visualization. This is your tab in which you're adding multiple charts. So you can select this and click on save. So the settings were successfully saved. So this way you can add your update your existing group by adding other uh, charts as well. Okay. So this was uh, the settings for your home page where you are setting up a dashboard on the home screen, which can be a compilation of different groups per program. So you can do that. Then we had to look at TI analytics. Now, this is specifically for one program where you can set up analytics for individuals. So these are not aggregate information. These are trending or charting or evolution of values which are captured for each tracked entity instance across the program. Okay. So for doing TEA analytics, uh, this is not really part of the curriculum, but since you had interest, so I thought of just introducing that. So many of these items are still in development. So you might not see the full results as of now, but it, there's no harm in taking the idea on what's coming on the roadmap. So you need to select a program <clears throat> and the program stage, for example. Now you see here that you only have repeatable program stages here, okay? Because the charting is happening on the values of same data element, which is getting captured across the, the program stage, okay? So therefore you only see the stages which are of repeatable nature. If you have stage which are not of repeatable nature, then they won't show up in this dropdown. So only the stages with repeatable will be part of this dropdown. Now I want to select the stage and I want to put a title as weight chart. Let me just copy this and put here. I'll put a line chart, period type, let's say daily. Now I can select whether I want a data element, I want a program indicator, or I want an attribute. I still can't use combinations, okay? So I just have to select one single uh, thing from here. Okay. So I'll select data element and I'll choose data element as contact weight, okay? And add T analytics. I can add one more. Say that's in there. Oh, sorry, I can do contact registration, I can do symptoms, temp monitoring. Okay. 
data element and then i can select temperature so you can create your t analytics as well uh so the app can be used for nutrition monitoring by default now so if you have a program where you're tracking children for nutrition monitoring then you can create these z score charts or <coughs> excuse me <coughs> these growth charts for each individual so you can do the monitoring there based on the height and the weight or height or age or weight or height the variables that you're selecting since these are uh based on the um based on the the gender also so i'll just select a sample here so you can select wg nutrition height for age and you need to select your uh, um gender as well so that it can define different charts for male and female because the calculations are different so you can define that and then you can define what comes on the x-axis what comes on the y-axis so this is a very, for a very specific use case where you want to have uh, these uh, um nutrition charts or growth monitoring charts to be shown for each individual patient okay so you can save this one. similarly you can do for a program so these will be visible in the program itself this will not be part of the home home screen but in the program when you go then you can see these analytics in the program you can select your program you can select an existing uh, visualization items which is or which are already created so you can select that <clears throat> And again, the same process. You can create a group of visualizations for that specific program only. Okay. Data set is again the same. Uh, you need to select your data set. So this database doesn't have any aggregate forms because this, the academy is largely focused on the tracker aspect. So if you have data sets available, then you can select the items and create a group similarly for that respective data set. So this is from where you can manage your entire uh, um, information which you want to show on the android app based on the offline data which is collected uh, so those of you who have been able to synchronize the configuration i hope they have access to the standard group that i created if not just let me know we can see if there might be some issue which might be causing access we should not because we've updated the sharing settings but if it is still persisting just let us know if you're able to see that then you can quickly do the exercise uh, from the learner's guide uh, six and five five and six <clears throat> so that we complete the the sessions for today so just let us know if there's any other issue which you're facing thank you very much Okay, so uh, for adding these groups, you should have uh, the super user access. So since your user is restricted to end users, you can't add these visualizations. What you can do is you can um, synchronize your uh, Android application, sync the configuration, and you should be able to see the groups that I created as an admin. So the exercise involves introducing you to how to add the visualization groups if you are a super user or admin for your implementation 
and then how you can use the visualizations which you group together on the Android uh, application under the dashboards on the home page. So we're not expecting you to add new visualization items that you can try on the DHS to demo version, or if you have your development version available, then you can try on that specific instance. So I added one more uh, chart in my visualization group as number of doses administered and I synced my configuration. So I was able to see the third item as well. So now I have three charts available here, one bar chart, one pie chart and one single value chart. So you can update your vaccine, the visualization groups and synchronize, the users can synchronize their Android application the configuration mainly and then they can get access to the revised groups uh, and to the more charts that you've added uh, as part of your visualization groups Hello. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, regarding that uh, sharing part of the individual uh, that uh, uh, tracker entity in uh, instances, we can uh, see the uh, in the Android app, we can see details and uh, there's a sharing options. When okay. we go to that sharing in, uh, options, there is identification attributes. Uh, each yeah. attribute. Okay. Yeah, it each attribute create a separate uh, uh, that QR code. Or? Uh, yeah. So basically, this feature is to share the record and the information from one device to another. Mm -hmm. So if both the devices have uh, the Android app installed, then they could <clears throat> one device could scan the QR code of mm -hmm. the uh, of the uh, of the pair, the source device and then can pull information of that record so i think depending upon the capacity which the uh, qr code can contain the record gets divided into multiple qr codes so you have okay. one for identification few for attributes one with enrollment one for events so okay. you, you do have multiple qr codes available which you can scan and pull the record into your device okay thank you thank you uh so we're 
moving towards the close of the session today. Uh, the feedback is open for today. Uh, in the feedback, uh, I can maybe share my screen and then show that because the feed you it's important for you to fill the feedback because it is part of your uh, attendance as well so for day one if you've not filled it till now please do fill that for day one as well and also for day two so once you register your feedback then only we mark you as present for the sessions and that will feed into the grades which are <clears throat> part of the overall academy attendance so please ensure you fill feedback for day one and day two both the days and uh, you also have uh, a graded assignment for android analysis i as i hope yes so you please do the assignment as well as we discussed on the uh, onboarding webinar you will have a week extra to finish off all your graded assignments so the deadline is 7th october but we request you to keep on doing the assignments especially the graded ones uh regularly within the academy week so that you are on track for getting a certificate and also uh, you can appear for examination on friday but in case was any reason not able to finish off within this week then it is open till 7th of october okay so please ensure that for getting assessed completely on the feedback plus your attendance and your graded assignments uh, please ensure that you are completing that so that your certificate can be generated accordingly okay uh, the recordings uh, are available here so <clears throat> i think they are getting updated on the zoom channel as well uh, sorry the youtube channel as well i'll check with the team if they have uploaded yesterday's recording but there is a guideline available to access zoom recordings uh, here so you can check from the Moodle platform directly and you can access the, the recordings as well so it should be available here yeah. so this is currently ongoing so uh, once we close then they should be available and these are the recording details for the previous meetings but they should upload that on the YouTube channel as well so uh, the link will remain same once they're uploaded I'll send a notification on slack in the announcements uh, channel so before we close if there's any issue any feedback that you have please feel free to share uh, and uh, uh, we are monitoring the slack channels as well so if there's anything that uh, we can respond to we'll respond to that and Many thanks for attending the session today uh, and uh, <clears throat> bearing with the trouble with the sharing settings. So, but uh, I'm glad that it got restored today and we won't have to uh, put in separate time for this tomorrow. But if any questions for, to, for today's session, just feel free to put on the Slack channels. I'll be available online tomorrow. So I'll answer those questions directly on Slack because there will be other facilitators who will be taking the sessions due for tomorrow. So thank you so much for your patient listening and we look forward to having you again tomorrow and uh, uh, please take care and we can end the session for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, if you have uh, another quick question is there. Uh, uh, I need to clarify whether uh, the Android, Android uh, screen visualization, uh, that option is only av available for uh, the super user only or the user who has uh, the web app uh, data visualizer editing facility uh, those who have that uh, access uh, do they have the uh, capacity to add uh, android app uh, data visualizations or oh, only for super user only so the visualizations adding updating is uh, uh, only for super users so like you do create a standard dashboard where you create a standard dashboard and give access to view, give only view access to remaining users. So they see the facility data, but they can't update it. So the same principle is applicable here as well. So when you're creating these visualization groups, you only a super user can do that and they can define to which charts the end user can have access to. So the sharing setting is also important. So the end user will not be able to update the charts or add any new visualization item through the Android settings app because they won't have any access to that. So this is all dependent on how the 
Uh, so you could release one version and take feedback from the team. So if they want more visualization items to be shown, then you can update your existing groups and save those settings and ask the end users to configure, to um, synchronize their configuration, and then they'll get access to updated groups that you have, or the new groups that you've added. So this is how it has been configured. So the setup has not been given to the individual because then it creates a lot of maintenance issues. So the setup will remain restricted to the super user and then they can further circulate the updations as and when they're made with the end users for syncing their configuration. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so thank you everyone. Uh, uh, look forward to meeting you tomorrow again. Bye-bye. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you.